All right, today's lesson is going to be about the law of demand. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward concept. One of the nice things about economics oftentimes is that there is a, a lot of common sense to it, and uh, this is certainly one of the cases for, for that. Uh, so the first thing we're going to look at is uh, just what's called the law of demand. Okay, and let's go ahead and get a, a definition down for it. Uh, we'll kind of do a textbook definition, and then we'll, we'll look at it a little bit uh, more plainly. So, law of demand simply says that there is an inverse relationship between the price of a product and the quantity quantity demanded of a product. All right, we're going to do that QD. Now, one thing to tack onto this is the phrase, it's a Latin phrase, ceteris paribus. All right, ceteris paribus simply means that everything else, we're going to hold everything else constant. All right, and so if we're looking at uh, the demand for an iPad, we're not going to pretend that people are making a whole lot more money than they were a month ago. We're not going to pretend that the Samsung Galaxy uh, comes out. You know, all that stuff. We're just going to take a, a, a snapshot in time. That's what ceteris paribus means. Uh, it's an economics term that you will hear often. And it just says, freeze everything. We're just going to change one variable. And by freezing everything, we can see what, if, whether that variable has an influence or not. Okay, so uh, that's what ceteris paribus means. So anyway, uh, this just says that there's an inverse relationship between the price of a product and the quantity demanded of a product. All right, now what that means in uh, plain terms is that if the price of a product goes up, so if you got to buy something and the price of the product rises, then obviously the quantity demanded for that product is going to go down. All right, it's pretty straightforward. This is, this is the intuitive or, or common sense part of economics. Conversely, if the price of the product goes down, then the quantity demanded is going to go up. And so what I want you to see is that, again, there's this inverse relationship, so up and down, between the price and the quantity demanded. And so uh, you need to be able to make sure that you can state simply and clearly what the law of demand is. All right, and make sure you include this little ceteris paribus part in there. All right, and all it says again is that there's a, an inverse relationship between the price of a product and the quantity demanded. Now, what we want to do uh, is to look at a product and see how this uh, actually applies and how we can, you know, put some numbers to it and draw it out and uh, put it in a chart. And so what we want to do is create what they call a demand schedule. All right, and a demand schedule simply is uh, a listing of the price of a product and the quantity that would be demanded at the different prices. All right, and so this is a snapshot in time. So right now, if we could freeze time and say, okay, let's create a demand schedule for uh, the iPad. And we would say, okay, at a price of 200 bucks, how much do people want? At a price of $300, how, how many do people want? Uh, and so it's just, again, the snapshot in time. So uh, let's do, how about we do one for uh, moon pies? All right, hopefully everybody knows what a moon pie is. Uh, my family and I have discovered that it is an exceptional treat after a good mountain bike ride. Uh, so anyway, uh, let's do moon pies. And so what we want to do is we want to put the price on one side. We want to put the quantity on the other side. All right. And so let's pretend that moon pies were 75 cents. All right, and we'll just, I'm going to make up all these numbers. And so at 75 cents, let's say that people would want to buy 100. Now, I had a little mistake up here. If anybody can catch it, uh, I've got price and quantity, but I needed to put quantity demanded. So uh, you want to make sure you're as precise as you can be with uh, the abbreviations that you use and uh, the charts that you use. So, uh, so at 75 cents, people want 100 of these. Uh, let's say we raise the price to a dollar. Okay, what's going to happen to the quantity demanded if we raise the price? And so hopefully, looking up here, or just intuitively, you can tell that the price is going to drop. And so let's say that it drops down to 80 moon pies. Uh, then let's go $1.25. And the price is, the quantity demanded is going to drop again. Let's say that goes to 60. Uh, then we've got uh, like a buck fifty. I'm going to run out of room. Uh, buck fifty, and that goes to 40. 
let's say it goes to a dollar seventy five and let's say that drops to twenty and let's stop here at two dollars and so at a price of two dollars uh, some store is only going to sell ten moon pies all right and so this is this is the demand schedule so when you hear that phrase it's just two columns of numbers one column has the price one column has the quantity demanded you can see that the, the law of demand holds here because the law of demand says there's an inverse relationship between the price and the quantity demanded as the price is rising here the quantity demanded is falling here okay so this is the law of demand now what we want to do is to put this in a picture all right we want to graph this out and again this is just plotting points try to draw that as somewhat as straight as I can. So uh, when we're in economics, we've got the two different axes. On the vertical axis, uh, we put the price of the product. And on the horizontal axis, we put the quantity demanded. All right, so this is going to be demand curve for uh, moon pies. All right, so let's put, let's see, prices, we've got 75 cents, dollar, buck 25, buck 50, buck 75, and two dollars. So we'll fill that in. These are all in dollars. Dollar 50, dollar 25, and a dollar. And on the bottom, we're going to put increments of 10, 10, 20, 30, 50. 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. There's 100, there's 80, 60, 40, and 20. So all we need to do now is just plot out the points, okay? And so, uh, again, you've been doing this part for a long time. Uh, so if let's just plot this one out. And so at, at 75 cents, we want to come down here. Let's pick another color. Uh, at 75 cents, here we are. Uh, people are going to want 100 of them. So that's going to roughly be right about there. All right, so 75 cents is our price, so we came there. 100 is our quantity demanded, and so we came there. And we came to where those two points intersected, and there we go. All right, so let's plot the rest of this out. At a dollar, people are going to want 80 of them. So at a dollar, people are going to want 80. <coughs> at a buck 25, they're going to want 60. At a buck fifty, they're going to want forty of them. At a dollar seventy-five, they'll want twenty, and at two dollars, they'll want ten. All right. So these are the individual points. Now, the nice thing about the demand curve is, is we can figure out, okay, what if they wanted to charge a buck eighty? All right. And so what we do when we get all these dots is we connect them, connect the dots. All right, and then always, always, always label the demand curve. All right, just put a letter D there. And so when we have this demand curve, instead of individual points, then we look at it and approximate, you know, if, if, what if it's 80 cents here, I mean, or if it's 80 cents over here, then we can just go to the curve and say, okay, what if it were 80 cents? How many would we want? And so we can draw that down, and that might be, you know, at 80 cents, we can say we'll sell like 95 of them or something like that. Uh, and so that's what the demand curve looks like. All right. And so just to kind of sum up here, uh, we've got the law of demand, which says there's this inverse relationship between the price and the quantity demanded, uh, ceteris paribus. And don't forget what that means. Uh, to get the demand curve, uh, we need to start off with the demand schedule. And so we take a product, and you just take at various prices what is the quantity demanded at those prices. All right. So this is our demand schedule. And so... That gives us, taking the data from here, that gives us the demand curve. We plotted out each point, 75 and 100 was over here. Uh, and then we put all the dots in, connect the dots, and that gives us the demand curve. All right, now, uh, one other thing I want to talk about real quick, and we'll come back to that one, uh, is this, there's a, a concept of, well, how we get the, the market demand. All right, and so individual... I want to look at the difference between an individual demand curve versus the market demand curve. 
All right, because the demand curve is simply made up. When we look at the the demand for moon pies, it's simply made up of all the individual people's demand curves for moon pies. You may hate a moon pie, uh, so your demand curve is pretty much zero. Uh, it's a flat line at zero. So anyway, but there are people out there that like moon pies, and so let's say that you like moon pies and I like moon pies. All right, and so we're going to be the two individual demand curves. So there's you and then there's me. So we've got the quantity demanded there, the price there, the quantity demanded there, and the price there. So I'm just going to draw one in, draw a curve in. Remember to label it. All right. I'm just going to put some numbers to this. So let's say that uh, at a uh, dollar seventy-five, you would like to buy two of them. All right. At a dollar fifty, you would like to buy what? Five of them. And at a dollar twenty-five, you might like to buy eight of them. All right. Now I didn't use all the. The, the prices. I'm just trying to get the, the point across about the individual demand curve. So that's you. Uh, so let's come over and talk about me. Everybody likes to talk about themselves. So at a buck seventy-five, I might like to buy four of them. All right. And at a buck fifty, I might like to buy uh, six of them. And then at a buck twenty-five. I might go all out and say, you know what, I want 10. All right, so this is the individual demand curves. This is you and this is me. Now, in a real market, obviously, for, for different products, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of customers. Uh, but this is just kind of the, the symbolic way of looking at it. And so what we want to do is add these two together. And that will give us this market demand curve. And so this is the market, MKT, and Econ is for market. Uh, demand curve, and there's the price there. And so we'll draw the demand curve in. And so we know that at a dollar seventy-five, at a buck seventy-five, sorry about that. So at a dollar seventy-five, you want two of them, and I want four of them. And so together. At a dollar seventy-five, since we, you and I, make up the market, uh, the, the total market demand at a buck seventy-five is six of them. Okay, and so we can come at a buck seventy-five, and when we hit the demand curve, we can bring that down. And we know that that number is going to be six. All right, so let's look at another one. Uh, at a buck fifty. All right, and so now we're looking at that number and that number because at a buck fifty. Come over and hit the demand curve. I want six of them, and you want five of them. And so we know together that at a dollar fifty, put that here. Then the total market demand is this five plus six, so the total market demand is eleven. All right, and then at a buck twenty-five, the total market demand, the so individual demand for you is eight. For me, it's 10, so the total market demand is 18. And so that's how you calculate the, the market demand curve. It comes from the horizontal summation uh, of the individual demand curves. And if you look at a product like an iPad, it's a global product. And so obviously, there's millions and millions and millions of individual demand curves. OK, so that's that. Now, you do have a little bit of uh, homework today. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, I want you to uh, do these problems. All right, let me. See if I can move this over just a bit. There we go. Uh, the first one is to think about a product that you and your friends or you and your family like to purchase. Uh, and then I want you to create at least three individual demand curves for a product of your choice and then create a market demand curve based on your data. So uh, you can ask your mother or your father, uh, your brother or your sister, uh, a stranger off the street. It doesn't matter, although don't talk to strangers. Uh, but I want you to, you can use you as, as yourself as one, create your own demand curve for something, and then ask uh, two other people uh, at different prices what their demand for that product would be. So you'll have three individual demand curves, and then I want you to combine that to create uh, one market demand. All right, and then the other two, uh, simply state the law of demand and use an example to illustrate the concept. Uh, definitions are important, and so uh, this is the first one that you need to make sure you get good. Uh, 
and then finally state and explain the reason for the slope